All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome to this masterclass on cracking the diabetes code. I'm super excited you all are here. Um, feel free throughout the presentation to type any questions into the chat box and I will answer them throughout. Um, so let's get started by just using the chat box can practice. Um, I wanted to just ask, you know, are you newly diagnosed? Um, have you had it for a hot minute? What type of diabetes do you have? What are some of the things you struggle with? Just let me um, kind of get to know you and your diabetes. Um, and I will give you a minute to do that. I feel like I need elevator music. All right, great. So I'm seeing lots of newly diagnosed, lots of people that have had it for a while, 15 years. struggling with food and things like that. Right. Well, I hope that by looking at all of these, you can kind of um, maybe see that we all are struggling with similar things when it comes to diabetes. So um, I definitely just want to, uh, Another kind of question to ask, um, do you feel like your endocrinologist has, when you see them, do you feel like they just have no clue what's going on with you and your diabetes and like how, how to make suggestions for you as an individual? Getting a lot of yeses for that. And I think that's pretty, uh, that's a pretty common experience. So I'm gonna pull up our presentation here. And so I just want y'all to know um, that you are definitely not alone in that feeling. This is the good news. <laughs> Whether you are newly diagnosed or you've had diabetes for decades, most people with diabetes feel like they are not getting the appropriate care they need when it comes to learning about medication strategies and how these play into your individual lifestyle. If you've known that chasing blood sugars is sucking up valuable time and energy in your life, you're not alone. I'm here to show you how to make your diabetes work seamlessly in your routine and life so that you can take back that time during your day. So my name is Rachel and I have been living with diabetes for 24 years. I am also a registered nurse and certified diabetes care and education specialist. In all of my experience as a woman with type 1 diabetes, as well as a clinician that specializes in diabetes and behavior change, I've learned that the biggest gap missing in the lives of people with diabetes are those effective and sustainable strategies. This can be like super difficult to learn and build on your own. Endocrinologists are not always specialized in diabetes care, and they often lack the empathy and the personal know-how that someone with diabetes lives with every day. So then we end up kind of turning to maybe some health coaches, right? Um, and they often have personal experience, but zero clinical background, which means that they only really understand what works for them most of the time. And general health coaching kind of is more so geared towards general health, which can be very helpful. But if you are a person with diabetes, you often need a little bit more expertise than just general um, health, healthy uh, habits. So I wanted a solution that is as accessible 
and personal to people as health coaching, but as up to date and effective as the knowledge of diabetes specialists. So I developed the stress less diabetes method to help people with diabetes integrate sustainable habits into their lives so that they can stop chasing blood sugars up and down all day because that takes up a ton of time. In fact, the average time a person spends um, on their diabetes management tasks is about four hours. This goes up even more if the person doesn't have effective strategies in place. One in four adults with diabetes will experience depression and anxiety, which is very significant. This is often made worse when a person feels overwhelmed and like they don't have a plan for moving forward. So even if your endo is a diabetes god or diabetes royalty and knows it all, you probably feel like the appointments go by too fast and you really leave didn't learn anything that can help you in your day-to-day -day life. So for those three reasons, finding a diabetes management strategy is an important part of taking the stress out of diabetes. So today I'm going to tell you the three most important elements of the stressless diabetes method. And I hope that you can start implementing them into your life right after we talk about them. The first one we are going to talk about is building a foundation. This is the number one most important part of making sure your diabetes becomes a part of your routine. There's absolutely no way you can successfully manage diabetes if your basal rates and insulin to carb ratios, insulin sensitivity factors, if all of these are off. Endos typically use a ballpark calculation when they're setting these up for their patients for the first time, and then we never revisit them. So my clients and I often spend a lot of time together going over how to appropriately basal rate test first. So you can see there's a little tool down here that we often use um, for that basal rate testing. And the idea is to get the basal rate somewhere um, to where it's working about 80% of the time. And that way, when things maybe are a little bit off, you are not really questioning the basal rates. You just know um, that you've done all that you can um, in regards to that setting. And then you can focus on more important things like, okay, maybe it's my cycle or something I ate that's causing this. So the way you can run a basal test is you want to pick a time when you can be fasted. So this would be a period of about four hours or more where you don't have any food or insulin on board. Overnight definitely works best for this, especially if you have a CGM. If you don't have a CGM, you can absolutely still test basils, although I would recommend doing it maybe later on in the day. Um, that way you don't have to be up all night. Um, so when you are looking at that CGM report or when you are testing yourself um, manually, you will record your blood glucose every hour and then go ahead and look back at that data that you have. I want you then to note any fluctuations of 30 or more milligrams per deciliter. This would be about 1.6 millimoles or more. If you're seeing a flux of that amount, that means that our basal rate is either too aggressive or not aggressive enough. So if you see a rise, that means we need about 10%. We're going to start increasing by 10%. So you'll want to talk to your uh, provider about that, or if that's something you do on your own and you're comfortable doing that, that's usually um, what we end up starting with when we are titrating basal insulin. And usually, so let's say at one in the morning, you were 130 and then at um, like four or five in the morning, you were 200. So this would mean that our basal rate is not aggressive enough. So at that one o'clock in the morning, I would be increasing it by about 10%. Um, you wanna go three hours or so before that peak blood sugar change. Um, Cause it's a, 
basal, basal insulin hits you pretty slow. So you'll want to test this a few times in a row before making any changes. Once your basal rate is optimized, it is again, so much easier to adjust other parts of your settings or lifestyle accordingly. So if you get anything from this, I think even though it's a pain in the butt to have to like set aside time to be fasted and, and kind of look at this, it's so worth it. In fact, I did some basal testing recently and it was a pain in the butt and I hated every second of it, but my blood sugars are like a dream right now. <laughs> they really, it just makes a lot um, of sense in regards to just keeping everything nice and steady. So the second part of stress less diabetes is prevention in place of treatment. So my clients see the most success with this little switch. Um, so basically, how can I prevent my above target blood sugars from happening in the first place? You'll find you spend less time preventing than if you were just treating them as they happen. So my favorite way of doing this is by adjusting the high alert in your continuous glucose monitor settings, or if you're not using a CGM, just adjusting the time at which you take action. So the high alert is a bit of a misnomer. I think the high alert should be called an action alert because this is when I want it to let me know when my blood glucose is moving and I need to intervene before it gets to a place where I'm going to be super pissed off about it. Personally, mine is set to 120 milligrams per deciliter because I am nuts. I'm just kidding, but I have my settings in a way that let me know, okay, my blood glucose is rising above 120, 130 this morning, what's going on? Maybe I'm sick, period, stress. So that way I can go ahead and intervene with a temporary basal rate or whatever I need to do ahead of time instead of waiting for it to hang out in the 200s or more. Um, or I can see immediately after I eat when I may have botched my carb count a bit um, and I need to readjust by adding more insulin. So I'm going to see that up arrow much sooner than if I had it set at, you know, 200 to alert me, in which case it's kind of, then I'm in a bad mood and already not thrilled about it. And it's harder to take action at that time. So that's the magic of prevention. It does take a little bit of practice, but I think you'll find that you won't spend any extra time or hear any more alerts when you adjust it like this. You're probably really good at keeping your blood sugar in that set range that you have right now. So if you have it set from 80 to 250, I'm willing to bet you're really good at keeping it between that. So imagine just tightening it up little by little. So go by like nothing crazy, 30 or 40 milligrams per deciliter or two millimoles at a time. And I think you'll be surprised at how much easier it is to prevent those blood sugars from going where you would prefer them not to go. So an example of how this has worked so well is with Dalton here looking so fun on the playground, but we work together at camp for, um, it's a camp for children with type one diabetes. And we were in the cafeteria eating lunch and he caught a glimpse of my Dexcom graph, which because I have my high alert at 120, it looks pretty narrow. So he said, Rachel, he shook his head. And I, I know he was just waiting for some insane answer out of me. But what the heck is your range at exactly? And I explained that my high alert is at 120. And everyone at the table nearly lost their mind. They were like, surely Rachel must be hearing alarms all day and going insane. And this is understandable. So I told them my theory that I just told you on the previous slide and why it's helped improve my quality of life. And I really don't listen to alarms all that often. So Dalton being the proactive guy that he is took my advice and tightened his continuous glucose monitor range a bit. And his A1C went from an 8.3 to a 7.0 with just one switch. No weird diet, no crazy exercise plan, 
just a change in his alert settings. So I encourage you this coming week to try it out. If you have a high alert at 300, try 250, try 200. Basically consider, okay, where would I like to start taking action and put the high alert there? And I promise, I think you'll see, okay, I'm, you may hear some more alerts than you're used to, but after about a week or so, you, you'll be surprised. I think you'll be really um, impressed with your, your skills. Lastly, my clients and I spend a large part of our time talking mindset shifts. So friends, tell me what runs through your head looking at this graph. What are some of the things you find yourself saying when you see this on your phone or on your um, CGM reader or your finger stick meter um, if you're seeing an above target blood sugar? Kind of what's running through your head? I feel like I can certainly tell you what was running through mine when I saw this. Um, I very rarely have this kind of experience and I know and I can see um, from what some people have told me when they, I had this graph up in my stories and um, it was a lot of, oh my gosh, what did I do? Or, oh God, I shouldn't have eaten that. And I think I, I certainly felt the same way. I can't remember what it was exactly that did this, but um, it was not a cute look. So, um, this negative self-talk and attaching worth to this temporary data that is our blood sugars is why it's so difficult to move forward and to live peacefully with diabetes. We are often trained to kind of like talk negatively when it comes to those things. And a lot of that comes from the language that we use. So the words high and low and bad and good. And it turns into this blame game, even though these numbers really are out of your control. All they are are data and they kind of just give you information on what you can do next and um, just what you can do in the future to prevent that from happening again. So switching to more neutral language or more positive language is essential, <laughs> so essential to making some sustainable changes and decreasing stress associated with your diabetes management. Technically, a thought should only last about three minutes. During this time, it's okay to feel all those big feelings. So feel frustrated, feel angry, feel upset. It's okay to say, dang, I wish that hadn't happened. That's okay. You're going to feel that way. But after that three minutes is up, the thought should pass by. If you find yourself ruminating on that thought for longer than three minutes, this is likely because you are perpetuating the thought. You continue feeding into it by saying, gosh, I'm so stupid. I wish I had known more about the pizza boluses. I'll never get the hang of this. I'm never eating that again. And just continuing that spiral of negative self-talk instead of, feeling the feeling, and then trusting that it's going to come down or come up or whatever it is. It takes a lot of practice, but I promise it's worth learning how to be more mindful when it comes to your diabetes. The best way to start practicing this is by just observing your current thoughts. The next time your blood glucose is above target and you look at it, Observe the thought. Is it negative? Are you blaming yourself? Try replacing it with something more neutral. So instead of saying, oh, I'm so stupid. I should have done that better. Consider saying, it's just data. I'll change my strategy next time. And then continue treating your thoughts as observations. Let them pass through without grabbing onto them. Silence that Dexcom, Dexcom alert. Tell yourself you will check your blood sugar again in two hours. You're good. Good to move on. My personal favorite is this is only temporary. You know, and you always have known that the blood sugar will come back to target range. You've never been stuck. 
yeah, never have have never come back up or down. And if that is the case, I am I am concerned if you have been stuck in the same place. But your blood sugar is always changing, so always remind yourself of that. It's temporary and it will pass, and then you can move on and live your life and uh, you know just go, go do things that make you happy and distract you. I personally like to listen or uh, watch a ton of TikToks <laughs> when I need to distract myself from my blood sugars. So that is my favorite thing to do. And I just wanted to do a little mindfulness exercise with you. Um, it'll take just a couple of minutes, but um, if you've never done a mindfulness exercise before. I hope this will be helpful. So you can close your eyes or stare at these beautiful neon signs here, um, whatever is more comfortable for you. But what I want you to do is just take a moment to notice your breath. You're going to inhale and exhale through your nose. And allow yourself to put all your attention on that breathing in and out through your nose. I want you to notice the sensation of breath passing through the nostrils. If you notice any distractions, just acknowledge them, observe them, and return to noticing your breath. It's okay to be distracted. That's how our brain works. But just in and out through your nose. Distractions are normal. You can notice them and choose to come back to the breath each time. Notice that there is a slight cool sensation as the inhaled air passes through your nose. Take a moment to explore that sensation. Now I want you to become aware of the sensation of your exhaled air. It's probably a bit warmer. Sometimes it's actually difficult to feel because your breath has traveled into your lungs and it's become warmed up by your body. But just go ahead, focus on that. Okay, now I want you to allow yourself to just focus on your breath in any way that you like. You don't have to change it in any way, just observe what's happening. And notice what you're experiencing, whether that's a bunch of thoughts going by in your head, maybe you're feeling relaxed, just put a little ID on whatever it is that is going on in your head. Now, from this quiet place, I want you to allow yourself to reconnect with you Notice what you're feeling. Is there anything you need to communicate with yourself or allow yourself to do in your imagination? Maybe that's be kinder to yourself. Some self-care. Give yourself a hug. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes.
and tell yourself how awesome you are. So I'm feeling much more relaxed, <laughs> but that's a good example of kind of a way you can, you know, when you've looked at your blood sugar and maybe it's not where you want it to be, or maybe it is. And you just take a moment to kind of check in, try breathing, check in with your brain, let those thoughts pass by, and then choose exactly where you want your brain to be and do something nice for yourself. So thank you for doing that with me. These were those three core elements of stress less diabetes. So that's talked about building a foundation for your basal rate, um, preventing before you treat, and shifting that mindset. So changing those thoughts um, to be a little bit more neutral or a little bit more positive. I hope that you can take a little bit of what we've learned today and start implementing it into your life. I think they are generally, um, the basal rate definitely takes a bit of time but the other two are super easy and you can start doing them right now. So certainly let me know. I'd love to hear if any of them have worked for you or if you have any questions about them. Um, I'll take a little bit of time to answer any questions if anybody has any. Um, I'm checking some of the live streams. All right, this question was about basal rate testing. So the question um, is basically asking, okay, well, if I um, am only testing overnight, how will I know if my other basal rates are correct? And this is a great question um, because it is, it is kind of, um, I tend to be on the side of, you as a person with diabetes just need one rate, right? So especially if you're using MDI, right? We don't give them um, multiple basal insulins. They just get one, one rate. So maybe that's a unit per hour or a half a unit per hour, 0.8 per hour, right? And then when we get into insulin pump therapy, we tend to like do a bunch of different adjustments and this is great, especially for maybe those times in the morning when we do need more insulin. But what I try to consider with my basal rate is that I have one rate. So for me personally, I have 0.8 units per hour. That's about my base rate. And I, I figured that out overnight. And I do need a small increase in the morning because I am more resistant, but that to me is more of a, it's a percentage of an increase. Um, so there kind of are two different sides to it, right? So the, the guy that does sugar surfing, again, he's a one rate kind of, kind of guy, and then he adjusts on the fly. So if he notices in the morning that he needs more insulin, he sets a temporary basal rate, or he gives himself a small bolus, which I often prefer because sometimes I wake up at a different time. Yeah, no. Um, so it's, it's more of a, for me personally, I like to um, prevent by, by kind of understanding again, where, where that blood sugar is headed and, and sort of um, reacting to that trend. Whereas um, maybe who somebody super routine kind of understands that they are, you know, they always wake up at eight in the morning and they always need this much insulin in the morning to, uh, for their basal rate to work. And that's totally okay. You can adjust it um, by fasting up until lunchtime and kind of seeing where or how much more insulin you need in the morning and throughout the day, just doing little four hour fasts to uh, basal test each of those times of days, if that's something you feel like you need. So that's the kind of other side of the thought there. So think like a pancreas, Gary, often um, he says, um, I think it's a peak in a valley usually is what you'll see. So a time where you will need a peak in basal insulin and a time where you'll have a, a valley or a drop in it, which we typically see maybe around dinner time. Um, so those are both really good books to read about 
basal rates and uh, just diabetes in general, but that's a great question. So I usually start out kind of just uh, doing that overnight basal test and then adjusting from there um, based off of some smaller fasted tests. But for the most part, I really just need one rate. And um, if I'm not using my control IQ, then I adjust with temporary basal rates. But this is, it's, it's definitely, it feels very complex. I think once you do a basal test, you're like, oh, duh. <laughs> I just have to see if I stay uh, steady for the most part during it. Um, but it, it can, it can feel, if you ever have questions about it, please um, let me know. So for those of you that are interested in having some more personalized help, um, in those sorts of things, if it's okay with you, I can talk more about stress less diabetes and how you can get involved in it as enrollment is now officially open. Yay! How exciting. Thank you for being there with me. But anyway, so I'll talk a little bit about it for those of you that are interested. But it is a three month program. Um, consisting of regular sessions with me. And we, again, go over goals and make plans, discuss barriers, basal rate tests, mindset shifts, all that good stuff we talked about today. Um, but in regards to how it helps you individually um, as a person with diabetes, I also have like a little client portal. So you have access to me via chat for support throughout the week and in between sessions and ways to kind of track habits and your uh, continuous glucose monitor data, all that good stuff. This is um, kind of the content broken down of stress less diabetes and what I typically go over in my work with clients. Uh, of course, the amount of time spent on each is entirely up to you and your individual needs. I am pro-individual. <laughs> Again, I am not going to sit there and be like, this is what you have to do because uh, it just feels right. Um, I want it to be sustainable for you and to work in your life, which is how we get to a point where we're not as, as stressed out and, and feeling really confident and empowered in our diabetes management. So um, cost of the program is $9.97. You can do payments. I also have sliding scale assistance available in order to make sure that my services are accessible to everyone. So that link is available on the website for you as well. And I'm also super duper confident um, in my program. I, I really believe that it can help a lot of people. Um, it has helped a lot of people. So I do offer a full refund guarantee so that you feel like there is not any risk involved with it. And because I love you all so much, I have a thank you bonus for $100 off um, just for being in the master class um, and watching this. You can learn more about the program and reserve your spot at givemesomesugar.coach slash it's a lot of S's, y'all. Give me some sugar.coach slash stress less. <laughs> um, and you can read more about it there and use class 100 in the promo code um, section to get, get a nice discount. And if you have any further questions about what we talked about today or about the program itself, please don't hesitate to reach out to me on Instagram or um, TikTok, or wherever you are, email. You know I'm on TikTok regularly, just binging videos. So <laughs> good place to reach me. Um, but either one is great. And you can always email me as well, Rachel at givemesomesugar.coach. Um, and just let me know what your questions are and I'm happy to help. So thank you for going on this fun journey with me as we kind of just talked about some elements that might be helpful for adding into your management routine. And I um, hope it was helpful for you and that you'll come to me with any questions or any successes or not successes or whatever it is. And I look forward to talking to you soon.